everyone welcome back to my channel I'm Angie it's nice to have you guys here today I have a monthly favorites I have not done a monthly favorites and I don't know how long but I've kind of been missing them I don't know if you've been missing them but I've been missing them I find that they're kind of one of the few sit down chatty video that I will actually go back and kind of watch it's kind of nice to go back like a year or so and see oh what was I really loving and do I still love it I should probably do that go back to like some of my first monthly favorites on this channel and see like how many of those products I still use and love let me know if you'd like to see that because that could be interesting and I haven't seen anybody do that so I've got my favorites for the month of April we are now into May when did that happen? This semester has just absolutely flown by and it's absolutely crazy. So I'm trying a slightly different format for the monthly favorites. In the past I've just kind of randomly rushed around my apartment frantically looking for things that I used and loved the previous month and this time I'm going to try to be a little bit more focused and I've got a number of categories and I've picked one to two things per category. And I think there's a few categories where I've slightly cheated on that. So the first category is jewelry, jewelry favorites. I'm not sure every single category will make it into each monthly favorite because if I'm still loving the same thing from that category, I might not mention it or I will, but just go quickly. Anyway, first category, jewelry. Um, so that I don't forget it because I'm wearing everything. Um, so it's these earrings, which I'll try to come a little bit closer. Um, they're slightly different, but they are amethyst geodes that have been sliced and polished um, and then set into these earrings. And I absolutely love them. I always get compliments on them. My birthstone is amethyst, so I absolutely love them. I bought them at the mining museum in Bisbee, so they were part of that Bisbee trip. I never showed you everything that I got because I figured that it would pop up in a video like this, and it has. So yeah, I absolutely love these. They are a favorite. I'm wearing my hair down right now while I'm filming, um, but I think I'm going to really love wearing them in the summer when I start wearing my hair up more often so I knew I wanted to start collecting a few more of these kind of dangly or real statement earrings for the summer but yeah so I think that with my hair down they're still really pretty kind of peeking through but in the summer when I've got my hair up in top knots and ponytails they will be really nice and kind of the statement um, piece and then the rings so these are pretty much the rings this one a little bit less so I got this for my birthday and I've worn it off and on but the ring stack is kind of the main favorite I got this ring here on the last trip to Bisbee um, the amethyst was bought on my birthday trip to Bisbee and this rectangle one was bought in December when mom and I went in December so the stack has been accumulating over the last few months but I've pretty much always been wearing them. If not, if not one by itself, then two or the whole stack. It's pretty much what I've been wearing on this hand for the whole last month and even prior to that. So those are the jewelry favorites. Um, now I'm gonna go into fashion favorites, then we'll do beauty, home, and then books. So fashion, fashion-y items. This scarf from Ted Baker, which if you watched my What I Got Myself, what I got and what I got myself for my birthday video you will remember this this has been amazing to take to campus with me almost every outfit I've worn this semester I've tried to make it so that this would still go with it so I absolutely love this it's great kind of I'm not gonna put it on because I'm already feeling a bit warm I've turned my air conditioning up while I'm filming I don't promise that I will continue to do that throughout the summer, but I'm trying to get away with it today. It's great, draped around my shoulders, wrapped around my neck. If my classroom is a little cold or earlier in the semester, when the daytime would be kind of too warm for a coat, but then I get out, I would get out of class at 7.15. By then the sun was well down and it would be a little bit cooler. So like this would be great to just keep me a little bit warm, 
not get too cold on the walk back to my car. Absolutely love this scarf. It was just a mainstay throughout the semester and this will probably be one of my main movie theater scarves over the summer. And then the other fashion favorite, also Ted Baker, no surprise there, is this handbag. When the spring semester started, I realized that I was looking for a, cross a small crossbody bag that would just fit my wallet, um, my keys, my cell phone, a lip gloss, everything else I was putting into my work bag, but I just wanted something small that I could easily get into and get my keys, like when I was taking the shuttle back to my car, or get to my wallet if I was paying for the parking garage. Now I've got a permit for the parking garage, so it's nice to just have everything I need so that as I'm walking up to my car, I can easily get in, get my keys. I'm not digging into my big work bag to find those things. So yeah, absolutely love this. I can't remember what the specific style is, and they won't have this print anymore but Ted Baker does tend to do the same style of bag for a while you know at least a few years they'll just do it in different prints and colorways so I really definitely recommend the style the strap is great um, there's no top handle on this bag like some of my other um, small Ted Baker bags um, and then the strap you can adjust it so I've got it on the absolute longest so that it fits crossbody on me really nicely so yeah loving this bag still using it even though the, even now that the semester's done but I definitely use that pretty much almost every day Monday through Friday um, for the semester because even on the non-teaching days if I was just dashing out to go to physical therapy or something like that um, or on Wednesdays I'd go to my parents house and I'd still use my work bag because I was bringing all my work with me and then I'd bring that bag so got a lot of use out of that um, so then we'll get into beauty favorites and then work our way back to lifestyle um, so skincare favorite is the Caudalie Vino Perfect Concentrated Brightening Essence. This has an, a H an AHA in it. I'm, I haven't repurchased this. I've used it. I've, this is a little sample that I got in a 500 point perk from Sephora. It lasted me a really long time and I was using it once if not twice a day every day so just a few drops was all I needed each time I used it so this bottle lasted me a long time the full-size bottle I believe is about $38-39 dollars. so not super cheap but considering the cost of use because of how long this lasted, and this was a 1.69 ounce bottle, I think the full size is twice this size, if not slightly more than twice this size. I don't think it's three times as much, but it, the bottle did look more than twice as much. So considering the cost per use, I think the value would be pretty good. I'm currently going through a pack of pads from First Aid Beauty, and I've got some a little sample of the Pixi Glow Tonic, so I haven't repurchased this. I'm gonna see how I like those. If I feel one or one of them works better than this, I'll probably go with those. But I really love this. I highly rate this, and I just love the way my skin felt, and I liked the scent of it. It was a very light scent. I won't lie. Everyone raves about the Pixi Glow Tonic. I'm not wild about the scent. And as much as I'm liking the First Aid Beauty Radiance pads, I'm not wild that it's pre-soaked pads. I kind of like having it as a liquid. So yeah, I, I've, I have a feeling I'm going to be returning to this. So that's the skincare favorite. So hair favorite is the Unite 7 Seconds Condition Leave-In Detangler. Um, since I've started dyeing my hair blonde, or at least the ends blonde, my hair has definitely been a little bit more fragile. So I've had to use a number of products to kind of help that, help keep my hair healthy. It definitely feels extra fragile <laughs> when it's wet. So the last thing I wanna do is just go dragging a brush through it. Even something like the wet brush that's supposed to help to tangle your hair, that alone has not been enough for me. So I found, I've been finding that this has been working really well. You definitely want to give it seven seconds or so to kind of penetrate the hair before you start brushing. I've noticed that if I try to just immediately start brushing, it doesn't seem to work. But if I take some time to really kind of press it into my hair and give myself just those few seconds, 
it does make brushing my hair a lot easier and a lot less fragile feeling. So I'm loving it. I'm using it every single time I wash my hair. So that is the hair favorite. Cosmetic favorites, I've got two and I'm wearing them both today. So the first is the NARS lip gloss. This is in the shade Orgasm. It's what I'm wearing right now. I find that it gives me just enough color without it being too much. So it's a nice kind of natural look. It's very comfortable. It's so comfortable. And as this wears down, there isn't that feeling of, oh my gosh, I've got to constantly be checking my lip gloss to make sure that it looks okay. I can reapply this without looking into a mirror, which is like the best thing ever. <laughs> and so this has been living in my handbag. I will wear other lip products, but I find that a lot of days I just rush out of the door without putting something on, and then this is what I end up putting on. And then the other cosmetic favorite is this little um, palette that I got. This is the Natasha Denona Blush and Glow Palette. I'm trying trying not to blind you with it. It's a very kind of metallic, shiny rose gold. And then it's got a little blush and a little highlighter. Both of these are absolutely beautiful. Again, it's what I'm wearing right now. You can do just a light dusting and it creates just a very natural kind of glowy radiance or you can kind of really pack it on for a more dramatic look especially the highlighter the blush does have shimmer in it so if you're a fan of matte blushes don't bother with this palette but I don't mind a glowy blush <laughs> what I liked about this is this little palette which also comes with a mirror in it which is fantastic normally little compacts like this don't come with a mirror but despite the size of these I still I don't have a problem getting my blush brush in here and being able to apply it and this little palette was $19 in the kind of gauntlet sample size area of by the register really like this I've been using this almost every day throughout April I bought it in March so I did a lot in March and a lot in April I'd say I probably use this about 70% of the time throughout the month of April so this was my main blush and highlighter and often even when I used a different blush I still use that highlighter because I really do like that highlighter and then fragrance favorite is by Pacifica and it's their French lilac perfume I I love Pacifica fragrances in general they are some of the most beautiful fragrances very natural they don't they're not chemical like I love my designer and premium fragrances I do but like they're still you can tell that those are very synthetically created whereas this smells much more naturally created and the Pacifica fragrances are free of phthalates and other kind of nasty chemicals that go into a lot of the regular fragrances fragrances are kind of one area where I haven't gone completely green. I will still use primarily traditional conventional fragrances, but if I'm going to go with a more natural one, I do really love the Pacifica. This has been living in my handbag as well, so again, if I dash out the door forgetting to put on a fragrance, I've got this. But then also, whatever fragrance I put on, because most of my fragrances are floral based, I find that if I'm trying to top up my fragrance throughout the day, this layers really well over pretty much all of my more traditional fragrances. So, love that. Getting into the lifestyle favorites, it would not be a monthly favorites on this channel without a candle. So the candle that I basically just destroyed last month was by DW Home and it is their Peony Bloom candle. I got this in the big three wick jar because I thought this jar would be really, really nice to reuse, repurpose. This has been sitting on my kitchen counter waiting for me to clean it out, but it just smells so good! It's got bouquet of peony petals intertwined with pear, apricot, and pink poppies softened with white wood. So it's just a beautiful blend. It's got enough of the peony scent that I just fall in love with it, but a lot of times when candles try to be just a straight up peony scent, they don't quite nail it. So I really like candles that are a peony blend with other scents because I find that it just works a bit better. So I absolutely love this. I got this at, which one did I get it at? Home Goods, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, one of those. They're all the same store. They're all owned by the same company. So for friends in the UK um, or anywhere where you have home scents, same thing. So yeah, you might be able to find it. I know they still have it because I've also bought it 
in a smaller version. So um, I've got another one to burn throughout May and probably June because I've got other candles that I'm also still burning. So that's the candle favorite. And then to wrap this up, I've got three books. I've been reading so much. I've been really proud of myself. And a lot of these I read towards the very end of April as the semester was ending. So the first is Bachelor Nation, Inside the World of America's Favorite Guilty Pleasure. This is by Amy Kaufman. A friend of mine gave this to me for my birthday because she knows I'm a huge Bachelor fan and Bachelorette. I have been watching the franchise since the very first season with Alex Michelle. I am a die-hard fan, but I'm also a huge critic of the show, and I've become more and more critical over the years and over the seasons. I definitely have my issues with it, and this book really was like... This is the book I wish I could have written. Now, she's an entertainment writer. She has way more access, so it was always going to be someone like this that wrote the book, not me. But it's like, I kept reading this thinking, like, she's in my head. This is crazy. Like, this is everything I've been thinking and feeling about the show. And I love it because not only does it go kind of behind the scenes, they call it the first definitive unauthorized behind the scenes cultural history of the Bachelor franchise. And so it's not an academic book, but it is a it, it is a really good cultural history and and to a certain extent cultural criticism of the show of why we like the show um why we watch the show and so in between each chapter and there's 12 chapters in between each of those there's a an essay of why i am a fan written by different celebrities so which i love that one of them was donnie Wahlberg. any other new kids on the block fans watching this channel so there's a bunch of like like amy schumer does the first one diablo cody does one allison williams kind of tv celebrities slash personalities and yeah i just thought those essays were really interesting because there's a lot of people in there like saying I consider myself to be a feminist, but I still love this show, which is some, which is a kind of tension or conflict that I've always felt. Like, as a feminist, there are so many things wrong with this show, but I still love it, and I still find myself rooting for the characters. The characters. The contestants. That's not right either. The people. Yeah. Um, so, like, this book really gets into all of that. Like, the whole idea of characters versus contestants versus real people claiming to search for love and and what all of that means so I thought it was really really good I ended up kind of tearing through this once I started reading it I think I read the whole book within a few days so absolutely loved that and then the other two books are kind of the first two in what I think is kind of a trilogy there's a third one with the same style of cover and the same type of title um, but these are poetry books which I'm not a poetry fan. I'm, I'm really, other than like classic romantic poetry or like Shakespeare, I'm not a poetry person, but I absolutely love these. So these are by Amanda Lovelace, who goes by Lady Book Mad on Instagram, and I think same on Twitter. I'm following her on Instagram because I just, I fell completely in love with her style. So the first book is The Princess Saves Herself in this one. And then on the back it says the story of a princess turned damsel turned queen and then the second one i read is the witch doesn't burn in this one and on the back it says burn whoever tries to burn you this one is kind of i would say very roughly is a lot of poems about dealing with past trauma figuring out who you are learning to find your true strength um, and coming through everything that you've had to go through and really kind of learning how to save yourself. I cried quite a bit through this one. And then The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one is a, kind of a lot of similar stuff, but this is also a lot of, there's a lot of feminist threads in this. There's a lot of kind of dismantling the patriarchy. Yeah, there's there's a lot of rage in this one as you're both what you're reading and what you're feeling as you're reading like it just it brings up a lot so I found that this one I laughed I cried I smiled I cried a bit more but in the end I just felt really kind of wow like it was so powerful and this one I 
I smiled, I raged, I smiled some more, I raged some more, and was also just so powerful. The third one I'm gonna have to find probably on Amazon. She says that they sell them at Target. I haven't found them at my Target. I found these two at my Target, but not the third one. And the third one is The Mermaid Gets Her Voice Back in this one. So I'm really curious to read that. But I read both of these. I took two days each to read both of these. Um, and technically I read this one in, in May, but I'm lumping them together because I bought them both in April. So it took me two days to read each of them, but I could have read each of them in one sitting. It's just... There's a lot of emotions that were coming up for me as I was reading them, and so I did kind of need to pace myself a bit. But I would recommend these even if you are not a poetry fan. Take a look at her Instagram if you like what she posts on her Instagram in terms of the poetry she sh in terms of the poetry that she shares on there. Get yourself the books because you will love them. So that is my monthly favorites. I will try to keep these a little bit shorter in the future. I do kind of like this format of the categories and picking one to two per category. Um, so let me know what you think about that. Not every month will have the same categories, but that is just how it worked out this time. So give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'm just going to wrap this up and go because this has gotten long enough. So thumbs up if you liked it. Say hi down in the comments. Let me know what some of the things you absolutely were loving throughout the month of April. If there's any books or podcasts or documentaries that I need to put on my list, let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you are not subscribed and I will see you all soon in the next video. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye-bye.